In today's video, we're diving into the gripping tale of one of history's most legendary frontiersmen, Hugh Glass. You might know him as the relentless survivor portrayed by Leonardo DiCaprio in the film The Revenant, but pay attention because the real-life Hugh Glass was even bloodier, grittier, and more awe-inspiring than Hollywood could ever capture. So sit back and join us as we unravel the untold story of a man whose survival instincts pushed him to the limits in the unforgiving American wilderness. This is the incredible journey of Hugh Glass, a saga more intense and brutal than you could ever imagine. Early Life Hugh Glass was born in Pennsylvania to Irish parents who had emigrated from present-day Northern Ireland. The life of Glass before almost becoming bear food is not well documented and, like the rest of his story, what we do know comes entirely from oral accounts. According to one legend, Glass may have left his family in Pennsylvania and taken on the role of a ship captain. Allegedly, the ship was attacked by pirates working under Jean Lafitte in 1819, and Glass joined their crew to avoid being murdered. He lived the pirate life for a year, allegedly murdering, kidnapping, and pillaging to stay alive. Along with another pirate, Glass escaped and journeyed toward St. Louis, carefully avoiding hostile tribes of Native Americans along the way. True or not, the tales supported Glass's eventual legend as an extremely hard-to-kill guy. In 1822, an appeal appeared in the Missouri Gazette and Public Advertiser, courtesy of General William Henry Ashley. The notice sought 100 men to embark on a journey up the Missouri River for a fur trading venture. Many of them, who later earned reputations as famous mountain men, joined the enterprise including James Beckworth, David Jackson, William Sublette, Jim Bridger, John S. Fitzgerald, James Clyman, and Jedediah Smith. Together, these men and others formed the group known as Ashley's Hundred. Interestingly, Hugh Glass did not enlist in Ashley's company until the following year when he ascended the Missouri River with Ashley. By June 1823, they met up with many of the men that had joined in 1822 and were attacked by Arakara warriors. During the skirmish, Glass was apparently shot in the leg and the survivors retreated downstream and sent for help. Following an assault by the Arakara, Hugh Glass parted ways with William Ashley's expedition and aligned himself with Andrew Henry. Leading a force of 250 U.S. soldiers, Henry retaliated against the Arakara tribe. Henry's group then traveled towards the Yellowstone River but had to be vigilant for Arakara who wanted revenge. He issued strict orders to avoid unnecessary gunfire and emphasized the importance of group cohesion. Not one to follow orders when he had other ideas, Glass wandered off alone, either to hunt or gather berries, and encountered the angry bear that ruined his life. The bear charged at Glass, tearing into his flesh as he desperately sought refuge in a tree. He managed to get off an unsuccessful shot and stabbed at the bear with his knife. The bear slashed at him in return, causing deep wounds all over his body, including a large hole in his throat. As the brutal encounter unfolded, members of the group eventually arrived and successfully shot the bear dead. However, the irreversible damage to Glass had already been inflicted, marking a pivotal and harrowing moment in his life. The men were convinced Glass would not survive his injuries. Nevertheless, they carried Glass on a litter for two days, but doing so greatly slowed the pace of the group's travel. Henry asked for two volunteers to stay with Glass until he died and then bury him. When reportedly offered a payment of anywhere from 80 to 400, equal to 1500 in the 7500 in 2017, John Fitzgerald and Tina Gear Jim Bridger volunteered. 
The rest of the group left in a hurry. We let the two men waved fleas away from Glass's mangled body, supplied him with waiter, and anxiously waited for him to stop breathing. Later, claiming that they were interrupted by attacking Arakara, the pair grabbed the rifle, knife, and other equipment belonging to Glass and took flight. Fitzgerald and Bridges later caught up with the party and incorrectly reported to Ashley that Glass had died. There is a debate whether Bridges was actually famed mountain man Jim Bridger. Glass survived his bear attack. Drifting in and out of consciousness after the bear attack, Hugh Glass managed to drink from a stream and eat berries. Slowly, he regained his strength and recovered to the point that he could move around. Remarkably resourceful, Glass reportedly captured and killed a rattlesnake using a rock, surviving on its meat for several days. Eventually, he was able to crawl and began making his way toward Fort Kiowa to track down John Fitzgerald and Jim Bridger, while some depictions in The Revenant attribute his actions to a thirst for revenge following the alleged killing of his son, whose existency remains unverified, historians contend that Glass was primarily motivated by the desire to retrieve his firearm. Various accounts of his arduous journey suggest that he covered a distance ranging from 80 to 200 miles over a six-week period, all while recovering from a broken leg and a grievous throat injury. Glass screamed at a wolf pack. Stories about how Hugh Glass survived after he was abandoned vary greatly. While there are discrepancies in accounts regarding the distance he covered, the individuals he encountered, and the prevailing weather conditions, Glass definitely did whatever he could in order to live. He ate what he could get and killed whatever he needed to. According to one story, Glass stumbled upon a group of wolves devouring a buffalo calf. Waiting patiently until the wolves were satiated, he seized the opportunity to claim the remains for himself. Displaying remarkable determination, Glass compelled himself to stand and confronted the wolves with shouts until they retreated. He ate from the carcass for several days until it spoiled. It said these meals greatly improved his recovery, and he was able to travel ten miles a day. Despite some friendly Sioux on his journey to retrieve his gun, Hugh Glass had several run-ins with Native Americans that didn't go so well. Once he reached Fort Kiowa, Glass aligned himself with a group of French traders. However, after he made it to Fort Kiowa, Glass joined up with a few French traders who were immediately attacked by a group of Re-Indians after he decided to go in another direction. The Re noticed Glass and came after him but he was allegedly saved by a Mandan who took him to his village and fed him. Continuing his journey, Glass traveled with a party of fellow trappers and encountered a group of individuals they believed to be Pawnee for the purposes of trade. Tragically, these individuals turned out to be rickeries, resulting in a violent confrontation that claimed the lives of two members of Glass's party. The surviving members managed to escape and separated. Hugh Glass's Revenge In his pursuit of John Fitzgerald and Jim Bridger, Hugh Glass eventually reached Fort Henry around 1824. In a tale that has persisted, he arrived during the harsh winter, resembling a frozen specter to the fort's inhabitants. Bridger was at the fort and had been allegedly tormented over his decision to go along with Fitzgerald. Rather than resorting to violence, Glass gave the young man a strict lecture and told him to behave better in the future. Although Glass had slightly more animosity toward Fitzgerald, but after learning he had since joined the military, it was illegal to kill a solitaire. He could take no further action against him. It may have turned into an epic overtime, but the entire story of Glass's journey to reclaim his gun ended when a captain at Fort Henry simply gave it back to him. Hugh Glass's Death As shoppers opted for cloth hats instead of fur, the trapping industry slowed down. 
the westward expansion became more accessible as earlier pioneers had already cleared the way, making the services of explorers and outdoor trailblazers less essential. Despite the changing times, Hugh Glass persisted in his trapping endeavors until his final days. His last employment was with a company stationed at a fort near the Yellowstone and Bighorn Rivers. In 1833, Glass and some other trappers were walking across the frozen river when Arakara rode up and surrounded them. The Arakara subsequently carried out a brutal attack, killing Glass and his companions. A monument to Glass was placed near the site of his mauling on the southern shore of the present-day Shade Hill Reservoir in Perkins County, South Dakota, at the forks of the Grand River. The nearby Hugh Glass Lakeside Use Area is a free state-managed campground and picnic area. In conclusion, delving into the real-life saga of Hugh Glass reveals a story even more gripping and bloodier than the cinematic portrayal in The Revenant. Glass's resilience, brave, and the harrowing challenges he faced paint a picture of a true frontier hero. Stay tuned for our next exploration into the untold stories of history's intriguing characters. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.